After days in limbo, orders arrive. A summons to the Kremlin. He's told that he's supposed to have a meeting with the head of the KGB and the head of the first chief directorate, that's the foreign intelligence component of the KGB, to talk about his upcoming assignment in Britain. But somehow that invitation to talk with the senior people never comes. Instead, his KGB comrades take Colonel Gordievsky for a ride. He was taken by two KGB counter-espionage people, as he described them, big hulking brutes, and he was immediately on his guard. He arrives at a safe house outside Moscow, where a KGB welcome awaits. He's come with an old colleague, Viktor Kushko, second in command of foreign espionage. But not everyone at this communist party is a familiar face. He's told, well, these gentlemen have some questions to ask you, but let's have lunch first. Lunch offers the Russians a convenient excuse to drink. The first toast is to Oleg Gordievsky's promotion. He begins to feel woozy. Uh, he begins to lose full grip of his powers. His whiskey is a KGB cocktail of drugs that cloud the mind and loosen the tongue. He has this moment of, of lucidity after taking this drink when he realizes that he's been clearly given some sort of truth serum and his inhibitions are you know, falling away. And he's very concerned about what's going to happen next. Cut off, stressed out, drugged. Perfect conditions for their interrogation to begin. He knows they're pushing him. They're asking him to confess. They're saying, we know you're a British spy. We know you're working for MI6. Confess. And what that tells him is that they suspect him, but they still need a confession. They still need evidence, and they clearly haven't got it yet. Through hours of questioning, Gordievsky struggles not to incriminate himself. The drugs in his system make it impossible to tell. Is he keeping the story straight? or digging his own grave. <laughs> 